Hi everyone, my name is Darren Schreiber and this is Patrick Sullivan and we are the co-founders of 2600 Hertz. Uh, 2600 Hertz for the last three years has built flexible communication switches for our customers. These switches help their businesses communicate better. Now let's pause for a minute and talk about what is a switch. Every time you make a phone call, every time you send an SMS, even when you initiate a video chat, there's audio and video streams which are being sent over a cell tower or through a phone line, and they have to go somewhere, right? So they have to go to a communications brain somewhere. And that's what a switch actually is. It's the brain of your communications system in telcos and other businesses. Now, historically, businesses have focused only on one niche, one vertical. So Broadsoft sold mostly to telcos and carriers. Ring Central sells primarily to businesses who want a PBX or a phone system. Twilio sells primarily to developers who do web APIs. But there hasn't been a single platform where you can actually get all of your telecommunication services from the same system until today. 2600 Hertz is a one-stop shop where all of these APIs and all of this functionality come in one box, one system. We're here Whoa, very loud. to <laughs> announce something very exciting. 2600 Hertz Mobile. Now before I can explain what 2600 Hertz Mobile is, we should really look back on how companies are currently doing business with their mobile devices. Usually when you start a new job, they'll give you a mobile device and say, hey, this is your business phone. Or worse, they say, hey, use your you know, personal cell phone as your business phone. The big issue with this is that that is not an actual business phone. It is just a cell phone. It doesn't do extension dialing. It doesn't do call recording. It doesn't even do time of day routing. It doesn't give you any business features that a business phone should. What it is is a smartphone on a dumb network. So what have we done? Well, utilizing the Sprint network, we have been able to integrate mobile with our switch directly. And what does this mean? Well. If you make a cell call, it can now contact our switch exactly on the moment that you make the call, and it routes all the data through the switch, and so all your business logic and all the routing goes through the switch at all times. So how does this work? Well, we built this amazing video last night at 2 in the morning to show you. <laughs> so we're going to show you how this works. So we're going to give you a scenario, and the scenario is that the CEO has lost or broken his cell phone, right? And obviously, it's a busy CEO. He's got a lot to do. So let's go over sort of what can happen on our system if this scenario were to happen to a CEO who had a 2600 hertz phone. Okay, so something different about our service is you can actually bring your own device. So you don't have to go to the cell phone carrier to get your device. You can order it off Amazon and you can take it back to the office and your secretary can activate it real time from her desk. She can bring it over to you and even while you're on the phone already on your desk phone, you can dial a simple code on your, on your cell phone and now your call is transferred to the cell phone seamlessly. The caller doesn't have any idea that that's happened. And your secretary, even if you've left the office, can still see that you're still on the phone. And as soon as you're off the phone, she can call you and tell you about a meeting and how far away you are from it. And you don't even have to have GPS enabled on your phone. We can track it over the wireless network. You can use extension dialing, and we can even record all of your calls, regardless of what device you're on, so you can go back later and remember what your client said if you had forgotten. Those are just some of the examples of what you can do when you're actually tied in to the, to the core network versus an over-the-top application. So just a quick recap, you can do seamless call transfers, presence lights on the mobile, location tracking without the GPS, which is a huge one, and then cloud, or cloud call recording. So let's now talk about some of the advanced features you can do. Because everything is running through the switch, you can do advanced features like real-time transcription. What that means is speech to text transcription on the fly. This is great for trainings. This is also great for trainings and <laughs> archiving. Um, furthermore, because we've pretty much built out this entire network and we don't actually have to have access to the internet, you can actually set up private telecom networks. What's this important for? Well, the government is one thing that likes to have a private telecom network, um, military, hospitals, banks, anything that really needs that extra layer of security and they need a private network that no one else can break into, in theory. And finally, international calls over IP are significantly cheaper. If you've ever tried to make an international call through Verizon or AT&T, it's extremely expensive. Since all your calls are now routed through our switch and it's via IP, it's dirt cheap. 
So I want to drive home one of the most important things about this technology and make sure that you've really picked up on this. On a cell phone, a lot of people are talking about the next app that's going to be or replace your business phone. But if you actually look carefully at all those other apps, almost all of them are over the top. What that means is they work on Wi-Fi well, but as soon as you go out of the office or you go somewhere else, they're now trying to send your phone call over the data network. And that data network is not optimized for voice. And so it ends up with bad call quality, dropped calls, and other sorts of problems like that. This is an actual tie-in to the cellular network where your mobile call is going over a uh, actual phone channel. And the other important thing to understand about this is that all of this technology, even the activation of the cell phone, is being done via APIs that are exposed to you. you. If you don't like our interface, you don't like our UI, you can attach your own software and your own systems to activate uh, the cellular devices. If you want to get really creative, uh, you can take a certified device that you have, a, a different phone that can operate on the same network. It doesn't even have to use voice. It can use just the data portion of the API to activate the device. It could be a talking laundry machine that calls you when your laundry is done. Those are the types of ideas we're looking for. Well, thank you very much. All right. Six Great minutes. job, guys. Whoa. Judges? So it's, it's obviously an interesting collection of, of features and technology, but what's the problem you think you're solving that your customer is experiencing right now that's painful enough for them to you know, go find you, understand you? And so you have to understand who our customers are. Uh, we actually have three verticals. One is the carrier market. Um, the second one is the resellers. And the third one are developers. The main issue we're sell are solving is that a switch right now is millions upon millions of dollars. Our whole technology is all open source. Um, but the idea that the more switches out there, the more it can communicate with each other. And then there's, you know, propagating, they can save a lot of money in the long run. That makes sense. So, so I found um, that when you target lots of customer segments, you end up kind of sub-optimizing for Absolutely. Them. And I, I kind of worry. I don't know your space very well, but I kind of worry that you're going to have a hard time doing all three of these at the same time. We get this feedback a lot. Yeah. Well, <laughs> um, well they're, they're pe most people are stupid. Absolutely. No, no. Well, it makes sense. So when we started this company, we actually tried to raise some money. Uh, we did a horrible job of that. So what we learned was that if we wanted to continue the development, we had to actually bootstrap this from the ground up. Yep. Um, so the carrier sales is about five to seven year sales cycle. Yep. Um, our main revenue right now is through resellers. They can white label our solution. They can go into businesses. They can literally build the next, you know, APIA or Ring Central if they want to on our system. Yeah. We give them all the building blocks to build whatever they want. They can also do some really cool integrations with, you know, transcription or they can do video integrations. Um, and so that's. Do you like that? Yeah, I, I think one of the important things to understand here is even those big companies who previously used to be in a different vertical that you're sort of identifying is a different market are moving to API-based core solutions, even to power their own internal systems. Because even within their own teams, it takes a lot of work to coordinate everyone so that they can access the same resources. Yeah. So the real trick is it's actually one product, and it just happens to apply to verticals that exist today that are fragmented. And in reality, it's really a unification of those fragments, but we have to market individually to each of them because they're used to it. But the, the core technology is the exact same piece of software across all three. And there's just different apps that run on top of it that make it appear to what they're used to. But I would encourage you guys to focus in on one set, Marketing, prove yeah. it works. You know, It's going to be hard to market all these different segments. Understood. Absolutely. And we've been in business for about three years right now. Um, we're about 30 people now. And it's, but you've got a real business. Yeah. We and and business. we actually have these departments segmented. Yeah. We have different product names. You know, We're showing you one thing, but yeah. they are split. Yeah. Uh, could you so talk what? a little bit about the composition of that team between you know, sales support versus engineering? Well, originally it was a pretty much all engineering um, and pretty painful, but it was all engineering. And then eventually we were starting to do the migration from full engineering to sales and support and marketing. Um, and so right now we're probably about 65% engineering, 10% um, sales, and then the rest is marketing, admin, and support. The open source aspect of this has also brought sort of an unexpected marketing element to it, which has been really good to us. Telecom's really complicated, and even big companies, they basically say to an engineer, go solve this problem, and they call us because they find us somehow on the web. And uh, that's sort of allowed us to bring in contracts that, frankly, we could have never dreamed of that have been really good for us. So is your product just software, or do you have hardware as right. part of it? Do you it, have different software products? It started as software. Okay. We now have 30% of our customers 
frankly, we've learned even some of the big guys, they don't want to deal with running their own data center stuff. It's quicker for them to get to market if we can provide a starting, uh, a starting platform for them. And then our technology is actually super unique in that they can move their customers to their own data center later once they've proven out the technology. And there's not even any downtime in doing that. You can do that transparently. Right? So that's what's been happening is a lot of these companies start with us. And then, frankly, they come back to us and they say, you guys are doing a great job. We don't want to move. Uh, so that it, it's ended up being a split. So you're running servers with the software. Correct. And if companies choose to, they can move they can. to their own cloud. That's correct. And then it becomes a support and maintenance agreement. So we still retain the client, but they get the flexibility they were looking for, which is fairly unique as well. So, so that was going to be my question. You move into a support and maintenance model primarily yeah. over the long run? Frankly, it's pretty close to a Cisco SmartNet kind yeah. of idea. Um, once they've moved in on their own stuff, telecom's really finicky. If anything doesn't work, people freak out. And so they really want yeah. that security. Uh, it it's kind of sells itself. They, they understand the system's complex. That's why they came to us in the first place. Once they get used to it, they're happy doing the day-to-day, -day, and they still want someone they can call if a really big event happens. Um, so that's, that's been pretty easy. You, uh, you mentioned the ability to have a phone network that doesn't touch the internet that yep. might be appealing to the government. Have you made any progress along those lines? You have, I assume there's certification stuff that I don't really know anything about, uh, but hopefully you do. So yep. have you done that? Uh, yes, and unfortunately, we can't talk can't about talk it, about it. Uh, for <laughs> obvious reasons, but yes. So there nice is progress. Line. <laughs> it's true. All right, any other questions? Seems done. Uh, I have one more question. So. How much more active product development do you have to do, or are you pretty much ready to go into just sales and That's a good question. building out that Great support question. staff? That's a really good question. Can I take this? Uh, honestly, uh, we spent a lot of time on just the engineering. We didn't even have a lot of salespeople, as Patrick said before. Uh, our whole next year, in our opinion, is the thing works. We've beaten the living daylights out of it. Let's get it into everyone's hands humanly possible. So we are actually at a really interesting point right now where for the first time ever I walked into Patrick's office even you know, a couple months ago and said, just go hire as many salespeople as you can okay. find. Um, so that's, we're there. We're going to see how it works. I'm sure there's going to be some finessing to get it, the sales pitch right, but I think we're there. Cool. All right, we're out of time. Great job, you guys. It's 2,600 hertz. Good luck. Thanks.